And getting that dream body and getting to that point isn't going to fix it. You can lose your 50 pounds, you can put on your 50 pounds of muscle, you can look like your Greek god, and you're still gonna find a flaw and think you're not good enough. You need to feel good about who you are. Coach Greg, in today, very important video to watch, and it's about eating disorders, okay? I'm gonna do a video on a lady, her name is Kate, and it's from as slash is. I challenged my eating disorder for 30 days, okay? Before I even get into that, I can't believe that I'm gonna warn you, but this video contains discussions about eating disorders. Do you know how sad that that is? The video that's produced starts by saying that. That means they're actually so worried that this topic is so taboo that it's a warning to even talk about it, even though 25% of fitness related people have this. It is extremely common. I coach so many people with binge eating disorders, both now and in the past. It is insane how many people have this. It is extremely common, but you all think that you're alone. You don't think that there's so many people that are suffering from this. The truth is a lot of people are. If you're a client of mine, you're watching, it's not about you because there are a lot of you out there, okay? So I'm gonna watch it, I'm gonna respond and hope to shed some light, dispel some myths, explain what to do, what not to do, and you'll learn something. Okay, so this lady, Kate, she's gonna go and document her journey with a 30 days of a binge eating disorder, what it's like mentally, physically, everything, okay? You'll see what it's like. You have to respect this woman for opening up so much. It is not an easy thing to explain. Just so you know, a binge eating disorder is the most common kind or type of eating disorder, okay? It doesn't mean you automatically are purging, but it's a period where you just eat. You lose control, you eat like crazy, 3,000 calories, 5,000, whatever. A lot of food at one sitting, and then after you feel guilty because you binged. Sound common? Does that sound common to you? For example, this is what would happen. You'd binge like crazy. In front of people, in secret, behind closed doors, whatever. And then what do you do? You might go and exercise for five hours to burn it off. You might purge, throw up. You might then restrict calories. You might go on a 72 hour fast. You might buy a gym membership. You might make a New Year's resolution. Oh, and then you feel guilty. And it often goes back and forth. One week you do good, the next you fall off the wagon, you binge, and then you feel guilty and you're like, oh my God, and it's a non-stop mental issue. It's hard. Over the years, I have restricted, over-exercised, binged in secret, binged at night in secret, like snuck down to the kitchen, not eaten in front of people. So you might be skipping meals, you might be fasting, intermittent fasting, you could be doing anything. You'd be stealing people's foods and you can't stop yourself. It's like a drug. You might be buying special fat burners or following special fat diets. You might be doing everything and everything, hiring special coaches. How am I gonna deal with this? You might go in, you might go all in, you might go all out. You don't know what to do. You're just trying to fix the problem. You might get appetite suppressant drugs. There's all kinds of things. You might resort to illegal, illicit drugs, okay? Recreational drugs just to be able to not eat and have that hunger. But through therapy, I've been able to at least acknowledge that eating disorders have their own voice and their own narrative that they try to tell you. Okay, so she's been in therapy for two years to try to deal with this. There's a lot to it that I can't explain in a 10 minute video. You need to go get counseling. I do my best to help my clients. I'm not a counselor. I can help, I have a lot of experience with this, but I'm not a counselor. And you need to go and find the root of the problem and figure out what's going on. So you might know, I shouldn't binge. You might know the cannoli has a lot of calories. You might know eating 30 of them is not smart, but you do it anyway, you can't stop. Some of it is because of the hormones like ghrelin, because you're just getting that uncontrollable urge to eat. If you're trying to keep your body weight below its set point, there's a lot of genetic factors involved in this as well, okay? So you can, you can improve a binge eating disorder through the use of exercise and so on, 
okay? Exercise will make you feel good. It releases endorphins. And if you just skip out on cardio, skip out on exercise, it's only going to make it worse. If you just skip out on healthy eating, it's only going to make it worse. I have plans to go to dinner with my friend in like an hour and a half. But I'm like pretty hungry now, so I should make a snack so that I don't get crazy hungry. She has to go to eat in a couple hours. She's really hungry now. But sometimes I just think if I wait until I'm crazy hungry, then it means I earned the food. Remember Ryan Fisher? Earn your carbs, CrossFitter? That's the mentality. It's setting yourself up for failure, okay? Earn your carbs. If you need to get really hungry before you eat so that you earned it and then you can eat. All that does is make you want to eat more and then end up binging. I tell this to my clients all the time. Stop skipping meals, saving up your calories for later, and then you're so hungry, and then you can't stop eating. Hormone regulation is important. We can't break the laws of thermodynamics, but we can regulate our hormones more effectively through the use of proper eating. So, I ordered a dress to wear to Hawaii. It doesn't fit like... Oh, I got it all. And that can lead to more binge eating or more disordered eating. You might say, it doesn't fit. I'm not going to eat for three days. I'm going to starve myself to get into this dress. But then the aftermath is that you end up binging. And the cycle keeps going back and forth. It happens a lot. If you just never look in the mirror and never weigh yourself and just forget about everything, and then suddenly you buy new clothes a month later, you put on 20 pounds and nothing fits, that is not going to help your mental health. It's not. It's not a good idea to just forget about everything. I don't want you to feel guilty. I don't want you to feel bad about yourself, but I don't want you to just forget about eating healthy and exercising and just gain as much weight as you can. And then when you do try on clothes, be totally disappointed to the point of doing some unhealthy eating practices. Because it's like, okay, well, logically, if the dress didn't fit and you don't like the size you are, why would you binge? Great question. I don't know. So she feels shameful because she doesn't fit in the dress. She's embarrassed. And so if you just completely ignore it, it's going to come out in another way. It's going to rear its ugly head in some other form, okay? If you don't have confidence, if you don't have good self-esteem, it's going to find a way to come out, okay? And getting that dream body and getting to that point isn't going to fix it. You can lose your 50 pounds. You can put on your 50 pounds of muscle. You can look like your Greek god, and you're still going to find a flaw and think you're not good enough. You need to feel good about who you are. It doesn't matter what's on the outside, okay? It, people are going to judge you no matter what. But what is on the inside is what's on the inside. You're going to be confident whether you have 100 pounds overweight or if you're in perfect shape. That's how it should be. It's just not how it is, unfortunately. You need to find out what is really going on. Get your counselor. Do some thinking and discover it. You can write. You can journal. You can do all that stuff, okay? But in the end, you need to love yourself. It doesn't matter how you look. You need to love yourself first, okay? Then, of course, work on your health and fitness. It's going to help your quality of life. But you have to love yourself regardless. I reached out to a few friends. Some of them were like, you know what might make you feel better? Exercise. And I know that they're just trying to help because it does, exercise does increase endorphins. In my head, it was just sort of like, learn something from this. If you feel fat, you probably are, and you should go exercise it off. And of course, he's going to take it as, oh, you call me fat? I need to exercise off? But no. Exercise makes you feel good. It releases endorphins. You need to get out there and move. You don't believe me? I challenge you to go try it. Then see if you agree after. Okay? The worst thing you do is, oh, Greg's stupid. He doesn't know what he's talking. Try it. And then see. Okay? What's the worst that could happen? You improve your cardiovascular fitness and burn off some calories? That's the worst that could happen? It doesn't seem like a bad choice. And I wish I didn't have such a complicated relationship with food and it. Stop thinking of food as something you have a relationship with. You literally just eat it. You drink food, you eat food. It's not a relationship. If you stop thinking of it like that, that is the first step in my mind. I am not a freaking counselor. 
I realized that the answer was never going to be new clothes or a smaller size or healthier food because those things were never the problem in the first place. Self-worth doesn't come from how you look. It's from you as a person. Are you a nice person? Are you a good person? Are you friendly? Are you happy? Are you kind? Are you caring? These are the important qualities. Trustworthy. A lot of good qualities that you can have that doesn't revolve around your appearance. You can be 98 years old, 100 pounds overweight, and be a great person and have good self-worth. You can be all overweight. It doesn't matter. Okay? It's great to have goals and to be fit. Don't punish yourself for not being fit, but you need to have self-worth, which comes from the inside and what you are as a person. And then I had a birthday party tonight and I wasn't gonna go because normally I would just stay home and be like, I have to punish myself. So she debated going to the party. She ended up going. A lot of people are just like, oh, I don't look so good, I'm staying home. It's just not the way to do it. Imagine living your life like that where you're basing having a fun night on how you look, okay? When I taught PDR, I read this story and it was about a girl and she had the best time ever at this dance. She was loving life, dancing, talking to all the guys, having a great old time, the best time of her life. Then she went into the bathroom, looked at her hair and it was green. She had dyed her hair and it turned green and she freaked out and she ran home. The next day they said, what happened? Well, my hair was green. No one cared. Nobody cared. They loved her attitude. She was having a good time. She was dancing and laughing and carrying on. She was the life of the party. No one cared her hair was green. Then she discovered her hair was green and she left. You see what that is? Do you understand? Does that make sense? You judge yourself harder than others are judging you. What's on the inside is what really counts, okay? You can work on your exterior and that's cool, but what's deep inside is what matters, what really matters. There are some people with really fit bodies walking around carrying surfboards, being awesome. I think I spent a lot of time feeling really bad when in reality really great things were happening. And of course, people end up comparing themselves to other people. You see the fit bodies on the beach, on Instagram, wherever at the gym, you look and you're, oh, I'm not as good as them. Who cares? Do you think I look around and be like, oh, that person has a freaking million dollar sports car. Look at the house that person lives in. Do you think that matters? No, it's what's on the inside that counts. You start comparing yourself to everybody, you're gonna be disappointed because guess what? It's not gonna take you long to find someone better than you. Better looking, younger, more attractive, stronger, has more followers, has more likes, has a better boyfriend, has a better husband, has a better wife, has a better chick on the side, whatever. It never ends. You're never gonna be the best ever forever. You can't. So you need to start loving yourself on the inside and not care about being judged by other people. Do your best to look good, make it a goal, but don't be obsessive. Don't let it ruin your life if you're not the best. I think about how amazing it must feel to <laughs> wake up in the morning and not hate yourself. One of the most attractive qualities I find in a person is them being confident in themselves, okay? Overweight, underweight, skinny, tall, fat, short, smart, doesn't matter. Somebody who's confident, they love themselves regardless. They don't care what you think. They care what they think. That is to me an extremely important quality. You love your life, you love yourself, and life is awesome. I can't imagine not liking myself. So yeah, sometimes I brag about myself. Oh, Greg, it bench press this much or look. I'm happy with me, okay? I would love for everyone to feel about themselves the way I do about me. People are so shameful. Oh, you, you, you brag. Oh, that's so bad. Don't, oh, hey, Coach Greg, I love your shirt. Oh, this old thing, I don't like. Hey, you look great. No, man, I'm fat. I don't look good at all. I'd rather hear, I look amazing. I'd rather someone be overconfident. Be like, look at me. Even though they didn't look good, then the opposite. And the opposite is almost always what I see. The best looking women, the best looking men, they're very self-conscious and they look and they're not happy with their bodies. They're not. 
They looked so good. And they were like, oh, I need 10 pounds more muscle. I need more drugs. I need more PDs to get bigger. I need to be more shredded. I don't look good. I'm only at 4% body fat. I need three. I have 800 cc breast implants. I need a thousand. What are you talking about? That is the problem. People are obsessed with being just the best. And even if you are the best, you're still not happy. Okay? Confidence. Get some. If you don't have it, try to figure out why. Get a counselor. GregDuset.com for coaching. Greg Doucette, IFBB Pro. Bell button, subscribe button. Click all the buttons. Like the video. Like it. Bloop it up a couple videos over here. Be sure to check them out. Not everything I do is an ad or not video. All right? Until next time, I am out.